No one at the Pentagon wanted to believe it. A small single-engine jet from Sweden, a country known more for furniture than fighter planes, had just outperformed America's finest in a simulated exercise. The room went silent. Generals exchanged nervous looks. Someone muttered, how did they do that? For decades, the United States had ruled the skies. The F-22 Raptor, the F-35 Lightning II, symbols of power and dominance. And then came the Saab Gripen E, small, lean, and brutally efficient, rewriting every rule of modern air combat. It wasn't supposed to happen. Not like this. Because in the world of billion-dollar war machines, the Gripen E was never meant to compete. But what it did next made the Pentagon panic. After the Cold War, air power became a game of prestige. Nations flaunted stealth and sensors. Billions poured into jets that looked more like computers than aircraft. America built its empire on complexity. And for a while, it worked. Then, quietly, a few Swedish engineers asked a dangerous question. What if war doesn't care how expensive your jet is? Sweden wasn't chasing dominance. It needed survival. Its defense plan was simple. Fight with what you have, where you are. No overseas bases, no massive support chains. Just you, your jet, and a stretch of road long enough to take off. While others built aircraft needing luxury hangars and climate control, Sweden built one that could land on a highway, refuel from a truck, and take off again in under 10 minutes. The result was the Gripen. At first, no one took it seriously. Experts laughed. Cute, one analyst said, but not a real warplane. They weren't laughing for long. The early Gripens already impressed, but the latest version, the Gripen E, was something else. It could supercruise, fly supersonic without afterburners. It carried advanced radar, long-range missiles, and an electronic warfare suite that could jam and deceive even the most advanced air defenses. But the real shock wasn't how it flew. It was how it fought. The Gripen E isn't just a jet. It's a node in a network. When one sees a target, they all see it. One switches on radar. The rest stay invisible. Missiles can be launched by one and guided by another. It was built for teamwork, not ego. While most Western jets rely on American-controlled systems, the Gripen E can fight fully on its own. No permission needed. No dependencies. That independence? It's what makes Washington nervous. During a NATO exercise in 2024, Gripen E's flew alongside F-35s and Typhoons. On paper, it didn't belong. But when results came in, they were quietly classified. Sortie rates, readiness, mission success. The Gripen outperformed everyone. While F-35s waited for maintenance, the Gripens were already back in the air. While others needed long runways, Gripens flew from icy roads. It wasn't luck, it was doctrine. Sweden's air strategy focused on resilience, fighting even when everything goes wrong. To the Pentagon, that was unsettling. America's power depends on perfection. The Gripen? On nothing. It's the fighter built for when the world falls apart. Analysts ran simulations. Arctic, Baltics, Pacific. Every time, one result repeated. Gripen's surviving, operating from improvised bases, impossible to pin down. The Pentagon's conclusion was blunt. You can't kill what doesn't stop flying. The Gripen wasn't just cheaper, it was relentless. A US F-35 costs $44,000 per flight hour. The Gripen? Less than $5,000. That means more flight hours, more pilots ready for combat. In a long war, the math turns brutal. One F-35 equals nearly nine Gripens. Sweden didn't build a showpiece. They built a survivor. Critics mocked its size. Too small, they said. But that's the point. It's fast, agile, and minimal. Like a boxer who wins by never tiring. Its design philosophy. Smarter lasts longer. While others poured billions into stealth coatings, Sweden invested in modularity. Every system inside the Gripen can be replaced locally. No foreign codes or delays. That's why countries like Brazil and Hungary love it. When you buy a Gripen, you get the jet and the freedom to control it. By 2025, the pattern was clear. Nations from South America to Europe were quietly choosing Gripen. Brazil built them locally. The Czech Republic extended its lease. Hungary upgraded. Even Canada started asking, 
do we really need the F-35? Behind closed doors, Pentagon advisors admitted the truth. The Gripen was dangerous not to America's safety, but its influence. Every Gripen sold meant one less ally tied to U.S. systems. Every buyer gained independence. That's what truly made the Pentagon panic. Not that Sweden built a better jet, but a better idea. In the simulated Arctic conflict, Gripen S jammed sensors, created false radar images, and vanished. The U.S. couldn't tell what was real. The Swedish jets played chess, deceiving, striking, and disappearing. It was like fighting ghosts. That's when officials realized stealth isn't everything. In a world of sensors, survival means controlling what your enemy sees. The Gripen mastered that art. For years, the U.S. believed technology alone would keep it ahead. Sweden proved agility and brains could beat brute strength. The Gripen's designers didn't chase glory. They chased efficiency. Every bolt, every system, every kilogram had purpose. It's smart engineering beats expensive engineering. Because modern warfare isn't about who has the biggest base. It's about who adapts fastest. And no one adapts faster than the Gripen. At NATO meetings, U.S. officers called it the Mosquito. Too small to notice, too fast to swat. But this Mosquito bites hard. In one test, a Gripen E hit a radar station protected by multiple defenses, jammed, fired, and vanished. The hit was perfect. All from a jet that costs a fraction of an F-22. Imagine fighting an enemy who can build 10 times more fighters for the same price. That's what worries the Pentagon. Because if war breaks out in Europe, endurance will matter more than stealth. Contractors tried to dismiss it. It's not fifth generation. But that doesn't matter. Fifth generation means nothing if your sixth sortie never takes off. The Gripen wins not in labels, but in hours flown. Sweden built a jet that keeps fighting after others run out of fuel or parts. It's not a paper tiger. It's a wolf in lean clothing. By mid-2025, the whispers turned to policy. Internal reports called the Gripen E the most operationally efficient fourth-generation aircraft in the world. Translation. We can't match its tempo. In war games, Gripens held airspace longer simply because they never stopped flying. And when the dust settled, one truth stood out. America's jets may rule the sky, but Sweden's rule the clock. The Gripen E became more than a fighter. It became a lesson. While others built fortresses, Sweden built an athlete. Fast. Light. Enduring. It doesn't need to win every fight. Just survive every day. That's what scares the Pentagon most. Because wars aren't won by perfection. They're won by persistence. In the end, Sweden didn't try to outgun the world. It outsmarted it. And in doing so, it forced the most powerful military on Earth to rethink its playbook. That's why the Gripen E made the Pentagon panic. Not because it can defeat every jet, but because it proved efficiency, independence, and strategy still matter more than money. While others built machines that demand armies to support them, Sweden built one that needs only a road, a crew, and a purpose. The Gripen E isn't the loudest or biggest but it's the most dangerous kind of fighter, the one that never stops flying. And in a sky full of giants, that's the one thing the Pentagon never expected to fear.